All right, guys, we are back. And today we're going to be talking about step by step what to do to pay cash for a car, or really we're going to focus on like what not to do. If you're thinking about paying cash for a car, walking into a dealership, Pops, Miss Kimberly Klein, you're going to walk us through what you should and what you shouldn't do. Take it away. Uh, Who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you go first, Ray. Well, I will tell you as, as somebody that would desk a lot of deals, the euphemism for structuring the deal with the customer and getting getting the customer to say yes. The, the major thing that we would always ask the customer not to do after we've agreed to the out-the-door pricing was to not write the check before they go into the finance office. Mm -hmm. um, and that was for two reasons. One, um, if, if the customer walked into the finance manager's office with the check already written out, there was a rather strong likelihood that the finance manager was going to come out and shoot somebody. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and and the second reason... Yeah, well, it's true. Uh, and the second reason is because... There might be something that the, that the finance manager presents to you as a protection product that you might want to add. And rather than have to write two checks or three checks or put some on a credit card, you just wait so that you can get the total amount that the check is going to be. Bingo. That's, that's the first one on my list that I can remember. Yes. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah... It, Nine times out of ten, if a customer comes into the finance office with a check already made out that maybe they did at the salesperson's desk, it's going to be off. It might be off a couple of pennies. It might be off ten, twenty dollars because it's the finance manager's job to firm up those fees. Uh, depending on what state you're in, you know, taxes, tax registration, those fees all need to be firmed up by the finance manager first and foremost. And then secondly, what you said, which is the finance manager has to disclose and go over the menu with the customer. Whether you want something or not, um, yeah, just don't go in with a... If you want to save the life of the sales manager, don't walk in with a check already made out. Yeah, one of the things, Zach, one of the things that you have to remember as a, as a sales manager or as a salesperson is... The first reason that the finance manager is going to want to pull that gun on you is when you go in and say, oh, by the way, this is a cash deal. Okay, <laughs> that, that, that's the first bullet that's going into a chamber. Okay, <laughs> and then the second bullet that would go into the chamber is if the customer walked in with the check already written out. So the, there are certain things that you can't allow to happen. Okay, so my question for you is, do you actually pay cash when you go to pay cash or should I be prepared to wire money over should I show up with the check you're saying not to show up with the check like how do give me the specifics like how does it actually work well um don't take cash cash please don't please don't do that um, have you ever had a customer show up with cash cash too many too many um maybe you've got some new salespeople. they don't tell the customer you know don't bring cash cash and I've had people come in where, <laughs> with bags of money. I've had people come in with stacks of money in their arms. People, this is so unsafe for you and for everybody else. Don't do that. There are ways to pay cash for a car, which I'm sure we'll get to. But um, I've had people bring in cash that smells horrible because it was under their mattress and in their walls and... And they've been saving for a hundred years, and no, this is that's all good that you did that. But take that cash to the bank, um, deposit it, and I always recommend to write a personal check. So at the dealerships that I've worked for in the pa in the past, um, that's how they preferred it was that the customer write a personal check. How about you, Ray? Uh, we always preferred a personal check. It, it was for, for any number of reasons. It is not safe for anybody to walk around with large sums of money, um, cash money, unless, I don't know, they're in one of the casinos somewhere. Um, and, and you can have a security guard uh, escort you around. But at a dealership, you know, everything is glass. You know, every office is glass walls. Um, and so it really does feel unsafe when somebody comes in with ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in cash 
and you have two or three people standing around a desk literally hand counting the cash because if there is cash the finance manager is going to count it first and then the finance manager is going to ask to get a sales manager or a general manager to come count the money as well and if it is um, ten thousand dollars or more in actual cash a report has to be filed with the internal revenue service i think it's an 8800 form 8, or something like that 83 yeah. 8300 that that gets filed to notify irs that this particular person paid x amount of dollars in in actual cash so then i just want to make sure i understand like my order of operations so i negotiate the car deal with the salesperson get yes. the ogd price agree to everything sales manager is going to desk the deal <clears throat> which is just like really formalizing it to hand it off to the f and i manager yes yep then i meet with the f and i manager and i get pitched and maybe i want to buy the vehicle service contract great now I'm going to have my firmed up fees, final buyer's order. Is that really what I'm looking at? And I take that to my bank and the circled line, the circled line, the circled number. I'm going to take that circled number and I'm going to go to the cashier at the bank and I'm going to say to the teller at the bank and I'm going to say, this is the check I need, please. If you want to, if you want to pay by a cashier's check, most, most dealerships will gladly accept a personal, a personal check. check. Yes. Okay. So, so you can just you can just whip out your checkbook, and and once you have all those numbers, just yeah. So you don't have check. to leave. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And and the cashier's check. Um, I've had a lot of. This is kind of a gray area. Um, a lot of dealerships feel like cashier's checks are too easily forged. Um, so again. That's why they prefer a personal check. But here's another thing. I often had people ask me, hey, can I put it on a credit card? I've got, you know, a $50,000 credit card with 0%. I, here it is. Here you go. Don't do that. Um, you want to <laughs> you want to contact the dealership ahead of time. Ask them, how much can I put on a credit card? Dealerships exactly. have limits as to how much you can put on credit cards because of the fees that they have that they have to pay every time a transaction is run. So if you've got points that you want on that credit card, just find out how much you can put because you can do a combination. You know, put 5,000 on a credit card and write a check for the rest. Exactly. Cool guys, this makes plenty of sense. Final question for both of you, because you've now shared that you've had this experience of people walking in with like a, an incredible sum of money. Uh, what was like the most kind of like shocking moment when that happened? Uh, I guess pops you first. Like, do you have a distinct memory of when someone came in with just like a bag of cash? I, I have a distinct memory of a kid pulling up to the Nissan dealership in an old beater Ford, and and walking in and and looking somewhat disheveled, and nobody would get up to talk to him, and the kid said, "I want to buy that 25th anniversary Z car." right here on the showroom floor and your father looked at him and said yeah you and about 10,000 other people <laughs> and then and then he whipped out a brown paper bag with with cash and he says well I've got fifteen thousand dollars in cash that says I'm really serious about that <laughs> and so I stood up and I said oh I'm sorry my name's Ray and you are <laughs> <laughs> when was that dad that was like in the 80s that was in the uh, in the 80s yes yes That's awesome. and the kid cool. the kid was a clammer he would he was a clam fisherman out of uh, cape may new jersey and 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 that's when i learned you don't judge a book by its cover yes absolutely i love that story yeah i love Taught that me a valuable story. lesson yep for sure i just remember some uh we had some very much elderly folks um, I think they were like 90 years old and they brought in, um, in their arms, cash in their arms, both of them. And I'm telling you, they were both a kind of ill health, like a little hunched over, but by golly, they got all that money <laughs> in their arms and somebody opened the door for, oh my gosh, I can remember the fear just <laughs> pumping through my veins get these people in an office somewhere where <laughs> it's not all glass is there somewhere we can put these folks so that you know the rest of the dealership isn't watching this 
And I'm telling you, they were tens, twenties, and ones. Oh my god! And it took forever to do that process. What you said, Ray. I counted it. I counted it in front of somebody else. Somebody else came in. We had three and four people go over this because you know what happens on a $35,000 car and you're counting all this cash. Whenever you get to 20000 and you screw up. You got to start over again. You got to start all over again. You got to start all over again. So, yeah, that took forever. Oh, and that was the one with the money that smelled. They had to have had it under a mattress <laughs> or in a wall or under a floorboard or somewhere. But God bless them. They saved, they saved it all to buy this car. Wow. Well, comment down below. Let us know if you want to hear more stories from back in the dealership days of some of these experiences that Pops has had, Kimberly's had. I find that really fascinating. But... Hopefully you've learned the steps you should go through and what the actual like logistics look like of paying cash versus what you shouldn't do. Please don't show up with a check until you meet with the FNI manager. Everyone's life will be a bit easier and no one will get shot by that infamous gun. Don't necessarily love the analogy, but it, it drove the point home. So thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> You're very yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah. You See have, you guys you again have, soon. You have no idea the wrath that a finance manager can <laughs> can display. <laughs> it's some scary stuff. It's very, very true. As the dealership turns. T yep. Yes, indeed. <laughs> See you guys. See, ya. See you. Thank you. Bye.